This video will describe the history of financial physics. Historically, there has always been an underlying link between physics principles and finance. This is encompassed through the influence, Isaac Newton's Principia, exerted on Adam Smith's inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. The start of the history of financial physics was made explicitly clear by Bachelier, a man who received a large amount of bad luck throughout his career, and whose contemporaries were unequipped to receive his ideas. In 1900, he described the mathematics of financial markets in his thesis. He presented the markets as a game of chance which is still the modern consensus, testament to the ideas he introduced. Contradictory to common belief, Einstein was not the first to introduce Brownian motion in his 1905 paper. Instead it was Bachelier, in describing the mathematics of random walks, as he wanted to liken this to the random movement of stock prices. He suggested that if a stock price goes on a random walk, the probability of it taking a certain value after a period of time is normally distributed. He derived this by utilizing the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is derived mathematically as shown in the equation below where x denotes the sampling distribution n tells us this follows the normal distribution mu is the mean sampling distribution which is the mean of the population and sigma divided by the square root of n is the standard deviation unfortunately his key assumption that stock prices were random was wrong however bachelier does try to account for this in his paper by reasoning any predictable event would already be reflected in the current price of a stock. Unfortunately, Bachelier's revolutionary work was largely ignored, partly due to the infancy of the field. During the 1910s, research in economics was infrequent, but after World War I, and with the onset of the Depression, it became more important in the 1930s, with more funding put into understanding it. In 1959, Matthew Osborne published a paper entitled Brownian Motion of the Stock Market. He improved on Bachelier's ideas by realizing it was the rate of return that was normally distributed, not the stock prices. The rate of return on a stock can be thought of as the average percentage by which the price changes each instant. This would mean stock prices are given by a log normal distribution implying the rate of return goes on a random walk, not the stock price which is a key difference. The next key figure in the history of financial physics is Mandelbrot in 1965. He suggested that Osborne and Bachelier's work were partly incorrect, instead he thought real market returns were distributed by fatter tail diagrams. Fisher Black is perhaps one of the most recognized names in finance, he was a trained physicist and made a significant contribution to the Black Skulls model for option pricing. Some have credited him with making physics an essential part of investment banking. Black's strategy, now called dynamic hedging, consisted of building risk-free assets from stocks and options. He collaborated with Skulls to derive the Black Skulls equation, which debuted in 1973. It was also derived independently by Merton the same year. By utilizing the Black Skulls equation, banks could sell options and buy other assets in such a way that theoretically they didn't carry any risk. In 1983, Black became one of the first quants at Goldman Sachs. Roughly a quant is someone who analyzes data and utilizes computers to help them to know what to buy and sell. Due to a decline in physics funding, many physicists were unemployed until the 1980s when Wall Street started hiring them by the hundreds. In 1987, the stock market fell by 20% in one night. This was the first indication that the Black Skulls model was not the whole story, and afterwards, more discrepancies started to appear. Mandelbrot's corrected model offered a solution to this, and many physicists worked on correcting the model. Didier Sornet predicted another market crash in October 1997. One came on the 27th. He did this by utilizing the physics of fractures. The idea was that a rupture would be preceded by smaller events following a specific pattern, a log periodic. He also co-authored a paper in 1994, which showed how to price options even if the underlying stock does not follow the assumptions of black and skulls.
The field of econophysics was established in 1995 by theoretical physicist Eugene Stanley. It encompasses the application of physics concepts to describe financial markets and has continued to grow. Financial physics has a wide scope and the Institute of Physics estimates one-fifth of graduates go into jobs within finance, using skills developed in their degree to approach financial problems in a novel way. The future of physics in finance hints at the incorporation of quantum computing and the Schrödinger equation for pricing. Now we will recap key dates. What key assumption did Bachelier get wrong? He wrongly assumed that stock prices were random. How did Osborne's ideas improve on Bachelier's? He realized it was the rate of return that was normally distributed, not the stock prices. Black used a strategy called dynamic hedging, but what did this consist of? This consisted of building risk-free assets from stocks and options. What is a quant? Roughly, a quant is someone who analyzes data and utilizes computers to help them to know what to buy and sell. Who predicted a different market crash in October 1997? And how did they do it? Didier Sornet predicted a market crash in October 1997. One came on the 27th. He did this by utilizing the physics of fractures. <laughs>